now we're going to go to your exclusive Robin with Michelle mm -hmm. Obama. She's preparing to release her book, as you said, her memoir, Becoming. And boy, in the book and also in this interview with you, she really digs deep. She is extremely revealing. She does not hold back. She's been in the public eye for more than a decade and very open, honest. Now she's sharing personal stories about everything from her struggles to getting pregnant to how she and her husband worked through challenges in their marriage. In her book, Michelle Obama calls this part of her story, Becoming Us, about the meeting and marriage that would transform the trajectory of her life and challenge her in ways she would never expect. You ready to talk about Barack? Who? You ready to talk about <laughs> <laughs> While their mutual affection has always been on display, now for the first time, Michelle is opening up about parts of their marriage she held deeply private for years. First, infertility. She writes, it turns out that even two committed go-getters with a deep love and robust work ethic can't will themselves into being pregnant. She did get pregnant, but then weeks later, she miscarried. I felt lost and alone, and I feel I felt like I failed because I didn't know how common miscarriages were because we don't talk about them. We sit in our own pain thinking that somehow we're broken. She reveals that it was with the help of infertility treatments that Malia and then Sasha were finally conceived. The biological clock is real because Egg production is limited, and I realized mm. that as I was 34 and 35, we had to, to, to do IVF. I think it's the worst thing that we do to each other as women, not share the truth about our bodies and how they work and how they don't work. And for the first time, she shares details about how the stress of their hectic schedules infiltrated their marriage. You write about at one point in your marriage mm -hmm. that you and Barack went to marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. Why did you think it was important to share that? For those young people out there who think that marriage is supposed to be easy, and marriage counseling for us was one of those ways where we learned how to talk out our differences. What I learned about myself was that my happiness was up to me, and I started working out more. I started asking for help, not just mm. from him, but from other people. I stopped feeling guilty. It's important for me to take care of myself. That's not on Barack. I know too many young couples who struggle yeah. and think that somehow there's something wrong with them. And I want them to know that Michelle and Barack Obama, who have a phenomenal marriage and who love each other, we, we work on our marriage and we get help with our marriage when we need it. Wow. Again, she was very insightful, uh, very revealing, um, sharing stories that she has never done before. And it wasn't just limited to that. It can't be easy to talk about marriage counseling there. No, and I asked her, like, you know, why did she want to do that? And you heard what she said because she really feels, because you see her now, you know, dancing and happy and the kids and all that. And she said it's so important. And she feels that, you know, our stories, all of our stories, uh, unite us and it's very important to uh, to be open and to let people in and to see what their lives are, are really like and you but you've interviewed her quite a few times over the years mm -hmm. have is there a change since she's left the white house two years ago no well there is a change because now she was mrs obama in the white house she's michelle again um now that she's not in the white house and able to freely express herself but the thing that has always remained the same about her and we're going to show you something she surprised her old high school she went to a dance class there they weren't expecting her they didn't know they thought the cameras were there because we were filming something else she walked in and they absolutely <laughs> erupted in seeing her and that is that is the thing that's been consistent with her. She really, <laughs> they, they went on for quite some time, but she really wants to have an impact in young people's lives. That's why a lot of her initiatives when she was first lady uh, were dealing with children and trying to, to do away with childhood obesity and such. But she, it was totally unscripted that she was there. It was only supposed to get in and out. She spent a, a, an excessive amount of time and uh, the way the, the young people uh, responded to her. And she said, you don't have to be in politics to be of service to others. And she does touch upon politics I was say, in the book. She's been staying out of the political fray, but in the book, she's, she has some words for there. President Trump. I want to put up something on the screen mm -hmm. uh, right now. And of course, he was propagating the, the whole birther issue. And she wrote, what if someone with an unstable mind loaded a gun, drove to Washington? What if that person went looking for our girls? Donald Trump, with his loud and reckless innuendos, was putting my family's safety at risk. And for this, I would never forgive him.
Mm. Because Long. the rhetoric, because of the mistruths, because of the lies that he was saying about the birther situation, that was not true. Um, she's a mama bear. Um, maybe that's Michelle now. I'm sorry um, about that. Actually, no. <laughs> oh, I actually, oh, just, I, I actually have. A, no, I have an excuse. My wife had surgery yesterday, so I have kept oh, the phone on. Oh. But she's doing great. Oh, is she's she? She's doing very well. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so don't make Sorry, fun of me, right? No, no, really. Saved by the bell. <laughs> uh, saved by the bell. But no, she. But, but Michelle Obama is a mama bear when it comes to her family, just like how you are. You have the phone on because you want to know if mm -hmm. if, if Ali's okay. She wants to know that her family is all right. And when um, then candidate. President uh, Donald Trump was saying those things. It's just said it's something that she cannot forgive. So, the, and I want to be very clear, and, and, and she is as well, that politics is nothing more than a chapter in her life story. It is not her life story. It is something that she touches upon, uh, discussing about um, the optics being different at the inauguration in 2016 as opposed to the two inaugurations when she was there, and she, she speaks about that. Um, and she is really, I think, also it's going to be surprising to a lot of people, her candor in discussing how people um, underestimated her, uh, doubted her, but also her level of honesty and her self-doubt. Throughout the book, she kept saying, am I good enough? Am I good enough? And that's something as even a woman, in the White House? even in the White House, and even in the White, and, and now, and, and that is something that a lot of times that there are going to be women that are going to be reading or watching the special on Sunday and nodding along. And uh, that's again what she said. Her story is relatable, but it is not, it is so much more than politics. And I know that a lot of people are going to be picking up the paper today and seeing the headlines and, and that. It's such a small portion of her story, small portion in the book, but yes, the, the, what she said about the president and not being able to forgive him because she felt he was putting her family at risk. And a family that she went through so much to have and mm -hmm. you know and, and which she, she, mm -hmm. she put in the book as well but her honesty has always come through. I think that's why she's always been relatable. I think that's why the reaction that we saw those young ladies have is the reaction that pretty much everyone mm -hmm. has when they see her. Yeah, and she's going to go on this on this book tour. In fact, we're going to have her live on the program on GMA on Tuesday, and then that night uh, she's going to be with Oprah Winfrey in the United Center, 23,000. Forget about a bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not a bookstore. But she's also giving away 10% of all the seats on this tour, 10% going to uh, high school students, um, other women's groups and that, because she wants to make sure that everybody has a chance to hear her story. So Oprah's going to interview in one, uh, Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker, Reese Witherspoon. Reese, Reese Witherspoon, uh, Phoebe Robinson, uh, the list goes goes on and on, and, and the book is coming out on on Tuesday. But she is really someone who um, she just has. She just I, I can't I can't stress this enough that she feels that our stories unite us, and that it hers is the American story. And, and you'll see that when you when you read her book and you see the special tonight. The book on is Sunday. Tuesday. The special is on Sunday night. Becoming Michelle, First Lady's Journey with Robin Roberts. That's Sunday at 8, 7 Central, right here on ABC. Now call Allie back, okay? Actually, that call was her doctor. Okay, okay. <laughs>